so it is Monday, April 24th, 1923, and this is the Compensation Board meeting starting at 5.30 p.m., and uh, it's, it is being recorded. Um, so the first thing we need to do is to have a roll call. Felicia, you want to take us through the roll call? Sure. Um, John? Present. Tara? You're Tara's muted, Tara. Tara's muted, too. Yeah, Present. <laughs> uh, Felicia, here. Deb? There. Uh, and Peter? Here. Um, so how right. many people do you think are going to listen to our recordings? I mean, is it going to, are we going to have millions of followers, do you think? <laughs> well, you know, what's interesting is if you put in Compensation Board Northampton into Google, a couple of these recordings do pop up. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I didn't I didn't look at how many people are viewing them or not. It must be in the <laughs> thousands, I'm sure. Sure. <laughs> Um, okay, so uh, next is um, approval of the minutes from April 10th. Um, so moved. Okay, second. I'll second. All right. And Felicia. Um, John. Yep, approve. Or Tara. Yes. Felicia, yes. Deb. Yes. And... Peter. Hi. Uh, do you have to approve when you've already uh, made, motion, the motion? made the motion? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's a good question. I think you do. I think still think there's a vote after that. that's a good point. Okay. Because you can call a vote, but it doesn't mean you're a yay, you know? Okay. Um, so what we have is there's no, no one here for public comment. Jim Nash is going to make himself available to answer any questions that we have. Um, so we can, uh, but at this point, a big part of the meeting is getting through the questions that I sent you the email about, because we've got to reach some decisions on these things so that we can then take the report and hand it over to our subcommittee to review it. And then we can, we can submit it to the city on time because um, things are, things have gotten a little tight. Um, so I'm hoping that we can get that done. So um, what I'd like to do is start going through um, the, the notes um, and, and, having some discussion and deliberation on that and then when jim comes in we can we can switch over and if we have specific questions for him we can ask those does, does that sound okay to everybody yeah yes okay um all right so i sent out the email i I'm, i hope everyone had a chance to take a look at it it really was to try to frame the discussion of what we need to decide tonight and to give context for things um and so the first was that uh, the role of compensation and, and some of this mirrors information we've already started to put into the report and I can I can share that report um, as we go along. Um, we, we assume that a diverse representation is good for Northampton. Um, we assume that diversity is encouraged through increased pay to some degree. We don't, we, we haven't decided what that is, but that there's a link between the two. And then um, I don't know if you had any um, opportunity, but I did put two links in here that have to do with this tie between um, pay and and um, getting elected officials. Um, any any questions or comments on on those general overviews? No. Okay. Um, next is we focus on what is fair. Um, so we look at what is fair and that's that's where we did the benchmark um, work that was done by, um, De Jim's about to come in, that was done by Sam and then Deb did um, most recent work, which was super helpful that we'll go through below. Okay, Jim's coming in, so we should switch and, and hey, hey Jim, um, you're muted because it's on auto mute when you come on, so. Hello. Does Hello everybody again. does everybody know each other? Does everybody know Jim? I I don't I don't think I've met Felicia. Hello, Felicia. Hello, Jim. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, um, Jim, we really appreciate you coming along. Uh, if we have questions, I know I've had the opportunity to talk to you about some general input and all that. 
Um, but I want to make sure that other people here, if they have questions, get to get a chance to ask you as well. So um, do we, do, does anybody have any specific questions for Jim at this point about the process, uh, about any, any aspect of this at all? And actually, first, before we ask questions, Jim, can you just give a brief um, description of like your background, how long you've been doing the, uh, your work with the city and what positions you've held? Um, I'm uh, the Ward 3 city councilor at the end of Jan uh, December. It will be seven years in that role. I'm currently the city council president. I've been the chair of the TPC. What else did I chair? Um, uh, community resources. Uh, I was the vice president. Uh, under when GL was the the president of the council, and thank God she never got sick, because um, <laughs> it was that was some crazy meetings back then, and um, so yeah, so that's that's my background. I've been doing this, you know, and I've been active on boards and committees uh, for uh, like a maybe going back two decades, so like many of you folks too, so. Jim, I'd like to ask you, because uh, since we have, we actually have a live person to talk to who's on on, on the city council. I mean, what what do you think of the compensation? Um, and and, and do, you do you think it's it's fair? Do you think it's uh, uh, not generous enough? Um, one thing we've been wrestling with and we'll probably talk about in, to, in today's meeting is, um, in addition to the stipend, uh, many of the city councilors take advantage of the health insurance, and we're not sure if other cities and towns do that. Um, so uh, go ahead. Yeah, so um, it, I, I responded to your survey, and I, I, I gave a pretty detailed um, response. I, so first of all, when I ran for office, I, I knew what the stipend was going to be, and I knew, you know, there was the stipend and the in the opportunity to take advantage of uh, city health insurance, and that um, that, and I think everybody who's currently serving is aware that that's what the compensation would be, and that um, so so I just want to start with that that um, I you know that I don't think anybody ran for for office with the idea that um, they were gonna get in there and change the compensation. So um, that, but so the comp, here's the thing is that um, in, in a lot of cities or towns, I think the compensation package that we're offering might be fine. But the, the fact of the matter is this is Northampton and Northampton has a really intense uh, need for, you know, they, they, they like to have communication with their elected officials and that um, there's an expectation that elected officials will show up at every event, will um, meet people on the street where they live, will answer their phone calls, will answer all of their emails. I mean, I rushed home to get here because somebody stopped me literally in the parking lot at Stop and Shop to talk about the sound, the, the volume of music coming out of the new bar at the bottom of Thorns, you know, that and I'm like, well, here's who you call it, but I gotta go. <laughs> but that, um, and that it's, uh, there's, there's, there's a high level of demand. There's other cities and towns where, uh, you know, People show up, the elected officials show up and they do their meeting and then they go home and that's it. And but that's not the case in Northampton. Um, the uh, the other thing is that um, what we're trying th that we as a community want to see is a more diverse uh, uh, range of folks for elected representation and that um that I we've made really great strides in that direction. That this city council right now has uh, two people of color. It has two uh, counselors with same-sex partners. It has this. This one's really a mar remarkable. Five counselors with school-aged children, and um, and it's 
five women, four men. And um, and I, I think and I I'm really glad that Northampton elected a council like that because we could tackle all sorts of stuff that we couldn't have done two years ago, you know, especially related to uh, race and um, in, in all, I mean, when you're a, a largely white uh, elected committee and you're trying to do this work, it's very problematic. But having, um, you know, Councilors Gore and um, and Perry has been, it's it's been a godsend. I mean, they're great people, but it's like, oh, we can actually have these legitimately have these conversations. Um, and that um, so um, the the thing I, I we are more diverse now, but here's where the compensation comes in for me is that um, I, I do think it needs to go up uh, for city council. I do think that um, the um, the the health insurance um, is, is an important factor, especially as you talk about. All right, so we have this diverse council right at this moment, but there's some turnover going on. Mm -hmm. So I know three councilors aren't coming back, and that if you don't compensate people enough, you're going to start having a much bigger turnover, and you start to lose institutional memory, and you also. Um, uh, yeah, and, and and then and then you have a council that can kind of um, uh, become disorganized, and um, and that we've we've had enough people returning over the years where where things have um, you know made a, a fairly even keel. But if you really want that that diversity to happen, I think that um, I think that the the compensation needs to be considered so that. We don't have people who run for one term or two term, you know, that I, I, you want people to run for two, three, maybe four terms because it's, it's, it's that first term, you know, it's just a learning curve. And by the time you get to your second term, it's like, oh, all right, I'm going to sponsor some stuff. I'm going to, I'm going to do a few things. I know the department heads. I, you know, I have the lay of the land and that, um, and that I think that um, having the right compensation that would, you know, support, you know, a, um, uh, a somebody with, you know, who's got a, a, a son or a daughter or kids at Bridge Street School and um, and 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 in particular, uh, somebody who is a uh, is single parenting, you know, either by choice or just circumstance. Um, and that um, that you know having the the resources to make some of that happen would would be really good. And I also think that um, that there's support within the community for for taking that step. That uh, people 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 think it is time. Like you know what we, we've been hearing it. We we heard it when we did the policing review commission. The select committee heard it when. Uh, to study barriers has heard it that you know it's a thing we've been hearing over the years so um, um that's that's my pitch for city council i i hope somebody has made a pitch for school committee but um i'll just say this they've worked just as hard as council over the last few years and um um that particularly during covid i i just i they were meeting you know two, three times a week, because they needed to just, <laughs> they had to weigh in on all of these, these things to keep the schools open. Um, and then the last piece is we, we definitely have to pay the mayor more. That it's, that is, that position is crazy hard. And as the council president, I get to see how hard our current mayor works. And I'm always measuring myself in terms of like, you know what, if GL's not there, I'm going to have to do that. And I'm like, all right, I could probably pull it off. <laughs> you know, or, you know what, or GL, oh, she really read through all of the details of that report. I might, you know, I, I'd give it, I, I would do that, but I also, I'd probably need to rely on staff more to, but, you know, you, 
It's all to say that the mayor has a seven day a week, 24 seven um, a job and that um, and that she she needs the mayor. That role needs to be compensated better. So yeah, and we've had two counselor. Uh, three of you are stepping down now, but two of you are long, fairly long term and Jamila's first term. And I yeah. think last last time we lost was it JT. We lost JT after one term. Yeah, and I don't think that was related to compensation. I think that was, I, I know JT, right? And that for JT, it was like there was a change in his work life and other priorities. And, um, you know, that the job is very demanding and he needed to, you know, not run again. Same with Jamila? Uh, I think that's too with, with Jamila as well. Thank you. Um, I had the op I had the opportunity. I haven't had been able to share this with the board yet. Literally, just before this meeting, I finally got a chance to talk with the mayor, and um, and there are a few things that that she mentioned that I just wanted to share and, and get your opinions on. Uh, she echoed some of what you said, where she felt that you know the council it's a very effective council, primarily because you always want a good mix of people who've been there for a long time, but you want some turnover. Mm -hmm. Um, but you do need to have some longevity for that institutional memory and for people to understand because they become they become literally better council people because they're effect, efficient and effective. The other thing that's great about council is council helps prepare some people to then run for mayor because you're in a position, you see what the job requires and all of that. So so having a strong council is great for the city and it's great. Um, it is it, it, also a proving ground, so to speak, or um for people who might want to run for mayor um, and feels that we've been very lucky as a city because our council is highly trusted. It's high. It works very hard. Uh, and she echoed what you did, where these positions, including yours, are, are really 24 seven jobs that the expectations of the public have gone up because of social media, because of email. Um, because of all of our expectations, right? We're just used to things being instantaneous. We don't have to go shopping for anything. They get delivered to our door and the expectations as a result mirror that. Um, and, and not only that, but people expect you to be have all the right answers immediately, which I guess is, is pretty, can be pretty tough. Um, is there anything there that, it, it, does that sound right to you? I mean, it seems to mirror what you're talking about. Yeah, I, I think the mayor and I are very much on the same page. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I will point out that the last two mayors were the president of the city council, and Jim is destroying that trend. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows what Jim's future has in store, though? It's de it definitely not mayor. It's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. I, I it, it's You need to be, you know, anywhere between... You know, 40, I, the ideal mayor is somewhere between 40 and 60 years old because it, it's just a high energy job. And and if they have kids, they have a loving partner who can really pick up the, the slack like our current mayor has. Yeah. You know, Bill Shear is incredible. So. Yeah, that's what the mayor said as well, that she couldn't be doing her job without having her partner covering for a lot at home. Um, and then she also really felt very strongly it was important to retain benefits. Um, okay. Any other questions for Jim? Could I do uh, one more plug for the health insurance? Yeah. Yeah. So I think health insurance is one of those things that can really provide stability for people. And that, um, so, you know, we're talking about, um, we, we want people to stay and stay on board and that that is the, you know, uh, a decade ago through my business, I was paying for a uh, blue cross for my family. And I, you know, I was spending 18 grand a year for insurance for the family plan. And those are the numbers that, you know, um, that, that families are struggling with if you're not part of a really big group. And what the city offers folks is the opportunity to be part of a group where you can actually get a, um, a, a cost-effective plan. It is not free, but, um, uh, and, and I'll say in our, our case that Dora was working for Baypath and essentially 
we had two the same plan, the Bay Path plan and then the city plan. Um, it, it, it would have been the same service, except the city plan um, had uh, much lower deductibles. And, and that's why we ended up going that route. But, you know, it's not like... Um, it's not like I ran for city council so I can get the, the health insurance. But the thing is, once you're there, you know, it's just one of those one of those things that everybody should have access to. And that um, um, I, I know that Councillor Murphy was he, he did a little poke at it in the um, in a um, op ed oh, a couple of months ago, you know, saying, you know, that this was a big part of councillors compensation. And it is compensation from the city, but it's compensation from a job and that we all hope to have jobs that provide health insurance. <laughs> so, you know, if, if, if we didn't have this crazy system where you need to have, have you know, where, where health insurance is just so willy nilly, you know, that, that it's amazing, you know, it's, it's, I'm deeply grateful that I have access to the to the city plan. It's a great plan, and um, and and it it's provided stability for my family, and I'm sure it's done it for other elected officials as well. Great, thanks, Jim. Anything else? Uh, that's all I got. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to head over to the community resources meeting now. Okay. <laughs> and you guys are great. Thank you for doing all of this. You know, it, so much of what goes on in the city is uncompensated, like what you're doing. Well, wait, but, wait, you know, wait. What, yeah. Wait. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll change that in the recommendations. Peter, did you have a question or were you waving goodbye? Okay. All right. Jim, all right. Hey, thanks so much thanks for, for coming. Time. All right. See you guys. You're the best, Jim. Thank you. You're the best. You're all the best. <laughs> okay. So, um, all right. So any, any comments on what Jim said, or should we get back to reviewing the questions at hand? I think we can review the questions. Okay. Um, so we were again, I'm, and I'm walking through the document that I sent you that email um, so we focus on what's fair, and that's where the benchmarking comes in um, that Sam did. And then also, thank you very much, Deb, that you did. And we're going to get into that down below. Um, and then we can also look at job demand, skill time. And as we've heard, the, this job takes a lot of time. All these jobs take a lot of time, which has become more intensive, not less. Um, what we need to consider with the budgeting, when when we had, we had some discussions earlier, that there's there are some thoughts that that came up around. Well, what's going on with the city budget? And so I contacted Jim about this, and I'm and he's like, city budget, it's it's all over the place. It's not something. It's not our committee's responsibility to look at. That's their job. Um, so. We are not supposed to consider the city's budget when looking at compensation. It's the responsibility of the council to decide what can or can't be changed. So what we do is we put forward what we think is fair, and then they figure it out from there. They figure out whether it's it's actually affordable or not. Um, and then he did talk about the precedent, meaning that I thought this was an interesting one, that every three years, the city re reviews non-elected positions every three years it reviews the non-elected positions compensation. What's interesting is that non-elected positions can be unionized or not unionized. However, even the non-unionized people salary is tied to the union. I don't know exactly how that works, but essentially every three years, the unionized positions get assessed. And depending on what those changes are, there's a certain amount of those that are applied to the non-union. So. Anyhow, I thought that was very interesting, knowing that we've now we're now looking at nine year gap since the last time this was done for elected officials. And then before that, I think it was even longer leading up to 2014. So we've had we've had these big gaps. Um, benefits. Deb, do you want to quickly go through? Should I share this screen or yeah, do let's I... share? Why don't you share the screen? It'll be easier for people okay, to see. Great. Okay, can everybody see this? 
Okay, yeah. So, so make, oops, sorry, that was not. Oh, in, just want to make it. Yeah, bigger. I think that's good. Not smaller. Okay. Well, I didn't spell life insurance right. Okay, so oh. most most have some kind of health insurance, but you see, with Greenfield, it's the mayor only. The East Hampton and Agawam have it for both. There is, I asked them, how much does the city contribute? Because I thought, you know, it's great to have health insurance, but not if you're making the employee pay for a large share of it. So I, I, that's what the numbers are for. You know, is that they pay 50 to 70% depends upon the plan, usually. Like you'll see in Greenfield, it's only for the mayor, but it depends. The city will pay more if it's an HMO, less if it's a PPO. Um, and Pittsfield was kind of, and, and then with, with, so West Springfield never got back to me. Westfield, yes, and they pay 77%, which is kind of a higher than the other. Um, in terms of retirement, it was kind of odd. There's this OBRA, which is apparently mandatory in some areas, and it's a 7.5% contribution. But it's it's kind of like optional. There, there. What I was looking for, really, because it's good to be eligible to participate in a retirement program. But of course, it's better if the city matches and gives, like, oh, we we will give you know a one percent match or two percent match or amount of money. Really, nobody does a match. They they um, allows people to participate but there's no match. They call it a contributory retirement system. Um, so that's basically it. I think I, I think that compares, like ours is, what, our health insurance is for city council, school employees. Oh, and that's the other thing. School committee members usually aren't covered. They're not in the purview of some of these towns and cities. They say, oh, well, the school, the school superintendent makes that decision, but... I think our school committee people are better taken care of. And then we offer health insurance. I'm not sure what our percentage is that we pay for that. For yeah, I, I, I don't remember what it is either. You you dug into I'll details here. That... Yeah, I'll have to check on that because I didn't actually check Northampton. But this is the spread, kind of the you know, 50 to 80 percent depends upon what the pro what the health insurance plan is. Yep. So that's what yeah. I have to say. Yeah, this uh, this either. this makes this makes me feel much more comfortable. Thank you for doing this, Deb. I just I just feared that we were if we were the only ones doing the health insurance, we would look so out of whack. And if yeah. somebody got a hold of that information and put it in the paper, we'd look like, you know, we just weren't doing a good job and doing a true measurement. But this, yeah. you know, whether whether we're doing seventy five or eighty, I don't think that's necessarily relevant. It's all in the yeah. ballpark, and I feel very yeah. good. Good. Right. I felt, yeah, I felt reassured because I, I didn't know if these other little places and, and others not so little. I mean, some Pittsfield is larger than we are. I guess the other ones are all about our size or not. But yeah, I think it's it's a pretty standard thing, although not always for everybody. I mean, I list with Greenfield, they only offer it to the mayor. So, mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, I was surprised, too. I, I, I was uh, I was wondering whether we might be an outlier, but it doesn't look like we are actually. No. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next one is we get down to the mayor's compensation. And what I've done is I've just provided some information here to help with the conversation. So again, the current is 92.5. It ranks 98th for the city in terms of pay. Um, the reason I mentioned that in particular was that in 2014, when the when our board last met, they made recommendations because they didn't like the fact that the mayor was listed 64th. <laughs> so, oh. so they they were like, oh, we, something needs to happen. And something did happen. <laughs> it's now 98. Oh. So, um, John, could you make the text a little bigger? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Um, I'm on an iPad. <laughs> yep. And then, um, and so anyhow, then I added a couple other pieces. One was, you know, we, we looked at... Um, just a cost of living increase, which over the last nine years was 27.0%, 8.8%, which means that that would put a current salary 
at 117. And again, these are just discussion points, nothing more. Yeah. That, that would say, okay, we're just doing inflation, keeping up with it, it should be at 117. Um, and that, and I just wanted to put the rankings. I would put it at 34th with a city pay. And then we looked um, average mayoral salary in the six benchmark cities comes out at 102, seven, and that would put it at 59th for city pay. Um, there was also uh, an interesting piece of data I found today. I don't, well, I, I was looking at average salary uh, salaries for mayors across the country. And um, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it, it, I can look it up. It, it falls within this basic range. So one of, the, one of the big things we need to decide today, two of the biggest things are one, what is the mayor's salary that we recommend? And two, what's the, what's the compensation for, um, for those on council and, and those also with the school committee? So what's the feeling on the mayor's compensation? John, I did think we? Higher. I'm sorry, uh, we, Peter. Go uh, ahead. Uh, when you and I and Sam spoke, can we even share that conversation? You? Oh, yeah. You can definitely. Well, the, the best thing to do would be to share, you know, what your feelings are or some of the things we talked about. We just have to be careful that that conversation can't can't wasn't deliberation. So that's the piece we've got to be careful with. So okay. um, yeah, I think it's just, so it's important to reshare opinions on that. So can certainly do that. Well, then I'll just give my opinion. Um, I, I feel that you know, she should be somewhere between 105 and 110 um, and probably closer to the 110, because even though that's slightly larger than the average, I think she's she's uh, she's she's better than the average. Mm -hmm. And it's not and it's not it's still well below what you would have gotten if you just did the if you did the CPI influ in inflation calculator. Mm -hmm. um, and I just think it's uh, I think it's uh, very justifiable. OK. Other and where would that rank uh, the, the mayor salary? It would seem like that would be lower than 34th or, or so lower, lower than 34th and higher than 59th. <laughs> Yeah, right. So, I don't know exactly what it would be, but yeah. What's our goal? I mean, what's our, or what, I guess, is that something we want to think about is what position in rank do we think is reasonable? Has that been used or no? Yeah, I don't, you know, that's a good question, Deb. I couldn't find any information on like what's, I don't think there's a an ideal algorithm for like exactly okay. what rank. I, I think the basic feeling was um, you know, at the time, like I said, in 2014, that 64th just seemed like really 64th. And yeah. again, we've lost ground. What that exact number is, I don't know whether we could tease that out. I just include it because of the fact that it came up before. Yeah. And I think if the inflation, if if this 117 would literally be the same, you know, 92.5 with inflation, then I guess that's a little troubling to me because although we're recommending a regular cost of living increase, currently that is not the case. So. Well, but, again, you know, cost of living, you know, people give different levels, right? You know, so yeah. it's not, it's not, you can do it a lot of different ways. You could have a variable cost of living adjustment. You can have it set, you could have it fixed. Um, sometimes organizations keep up with it. Sometimes they don't. Um, that really comes down to the decision that we choose to make. But yeah. uh, again, there's not a set way of dealing with that. It's it's a balance of what other you know comparing ourselves to other towns so we don't seem way out of whack, um, <laughs> and and that that seems to be fighting against what we all think might be fair. Uh, yeah. But I think it's something. I think it's something we need to pay attention to if if, uh, if challenged. Mm. Felicia. Um. So I was just gonna say, I, I to to Pete your comment about the um the the mayor doing a great job and um you know she's a, she's a great mayor and all of that stuff. Um. One thing I just think we need to keep in mind is we are deciding the amount for people that we might not know yet. So I think it's. Although I want to say, oh yeah, the mayor is great, so we want to like give her a raise. 
the mayor could not be the mayor in a year. And so therefore the salary that we're deciding is not necessarily going to be this person's salary. Um, same thing with, you know, the city councilors and um, the school committee and all of those things. Those people are great. And we definitely want to make sure that the compensation is able to get us good people. But I just want to make sure that we're not necessarily basing the salary off of our feelings about specific people just because those people can come and go, hence the nature of being an elected official. So does that push you in a certain direct direction, Felicia? So for me, that just makes me want to look more so at the numbers. <laughs> I want to, like, I want to put personally my own like feelings aside about anybody on the, the boards or the councils or anything and look more so to a numerical approach at how to do it. So honestly, I think your, um, the way that you kept up with the inflation, the 27.08, I think that was a good way to do it. I think Although, yes, you know, to Deb's point, we're, we're just keeping up with inflation. There's also so many jobs out there that don't keep up with inflation. So I think, you know, a 27% raise is still pretty substantial. Um, and especially in terms of where the ranking is, it's not, you know, grossly low or high. I think it's in a fairly good spot. So I, I personally like that calculation. And I think if we're going to do that for the mayor, we should probably uh, maybe be consistent with that in terms of the other positions for the, the city councils and the school committee members um, and all the other positions. I think that might be a good way to do it um, or even maybe um, maybe even like around the like um, if we wanted to do inflation plus two percent or something like that just do the inflation for the to compensate for the 10 years essentially and then two percent additional on that or something like that so that's just the way i think about it is i would just rather it be more of like a, a mathematical equation that we apply to all of them mm -hmm. instead of looking at necessarily the specific people on on those in those positions okay but that would be disregarding what other cities are paying their mayors. It wouldn't, it wouldn't. Um, I mean, I see your point there because we, like I said, we want to have uh, kind of like that competitive edge where we're offering a fair amount where we get good people in and we get diverse people in and we want all of those things. And we want to make sure that we're on par with similar cities. But at the same time, I don't think we necessarily need to say, oh, well, you know, this mayor gets paid this much. So ours is better than that mayor. So we should pay them this much because they're elected. They can come and go and the salary amounts aren't going to change necessarily just because a new person is elected in or out. So um, Felicia, if I applied your calculation to this, if we took the 27 plus two, I'm going to round that off to 29%. We're looking at 119.325. Just so people have an understanding of what that might be. Yeah. Do you, do you, is that a working number you want to put down for the moment? And then get, we can get some reactions or what, what, what do you, what do you want to put down, Felicia? Like if you had to put a number down, what would you say? <laughs> um, what did you say? The one, it was 119. 325. That's a 29%. So that's the 27 with like an additional 2%. Yeah, I mean, I think I think that's a good working number because it kind of accounts for the increase um, plus a little bit extra for, you know, that 2%. Plus with the benefits, that's a, a pretty good package, I think. Um, I haven't done it out for all of the other positions, but I'm curious to know what that increase would be for all of the other positions um, as well. And maybe, you know, we can tone them down or up slightly depending on our opinions, but I think it might be a good place to start. Mm -hmm. One of the things I want to just bring up that Jim said that kind of echoes this is, you know, not a specific person. I mean, he was talking about GL, but I do think what Jim's point was is that perhaps being the mayor of Northampton, and I think this probably applies to city council as well, and maybe all these committees, 
it's more intense because this is a more robust and engaged community. And that's, that was Jim's position. And I certainly haven't been here long enough to know, but so even if we seem a little bit more generous, like if we would go with the 119 or 120 as this mayor's salary, and if that puts us up to even 10th in the rank, I don't think that's a problem because I think that our, our community here requires a lot of work and that has changed in the last several years. People have required more involvement with the elected officials. I think it's a reasonable thing that Felicia, that you're suggesting to have kind of a benchmark. It's like a, a the inflation. This inflation would get us here. I mean, nine years without changing this is a really long time to keep the salary the same. I think I was I was astonished when I found that out that it had gone for nine years. Tara, what's what are your thoughts on this? I mean, I, I like what Felicia just said. I like that we're talking about really being dynamic in our suggestion of incre increasing the salaries to keep up with inflation. Um, you know, I think a lot of what we're talking about um, in the context of Northampton is that Northampton has always been a leader in so many ways. And I just see us really sort of lagging behind in this conversation. And I would really expect um, our elected officials to be higher on, on rankings than what they currently are. Um, so I, I would like to see us make a bold suggestion of increasing um, and really put it to the council and put it to the to the residents of our city to say, you know, who do we want? What do we want? What are we, you know, what are we expecting of these people? And also a lot of the conversation about how these positions have really changed, I think would be in support of seeing such a quote unquote large increase to some people. So do you, what is, what's a, what roughly what number would you be looking at then? So whatever the 29%, whatever you were just calculating, Felicia's. The 119.32. 119, right. 25. Yeah. Okay. And, and Deb, are you. I'm good. I'm good with that. Or rounding it up to 120. I don't know, you know, either. I think it's. That it needs to be substantial increase. Yeah, I really do. I mean, everything has gone up so much that I just think to lag behind inflation. And and not only that, Deb, I feel like the nature of the position is really increased. I mean, I know Narkowitz was available a ton, you know, as it were. Um, yeah. I, and I think that, you know, to Jim's point and to other people's points, this these elected officials this is much more than a uh non-externally facing non-public position i mean things the things that are expected of these people that are serving is mm -hmm. above and beyond right now um coming out of covid coming out of you know where we've been in the world where we are in the world i mean it's just it, it's a lot yeah and and having employees of the city that are been getting regular raises certainly they haven't been stuck nine years back in, in compensation i'm sure you know people that work for the city have gotten raises well but they yeah, have officials right. that, have that's, that's where the positions are reviewed every three years yeah yeah um yeah i know you know i peter and i have talked about this before one of the things that we that did come up that you know we were trying to work with is this idea of like well what's going on with the city budget and trying to be respectful of the city budget and i know that at that point you know we're thinking well you know maybe we just we want to be responsible and 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 look at um at least for me i, I speak for myself i did want to look at a lower uh, number on that when Jim told me that that's not our responsibility, that's it's their responsibility, then I'm I I'm 
want to at least I would I feel comfortable at least giving them um, an increase that covers the cost of living um, and, and trusting the council to figure out what's what they can afford and not afford. I think that's a really important point is that we don't have to worry about where's the money coming from. I mean, you know, well, we somebody didn't, does. <laughs> we didn't read them, but our little committee does it because we can say this makes sense based on, as, as Felicia said, you know, the numbers and we can tie it to something like inflation. So I, I think it makes sense. Now, what would that be? The 29% increase for the other city council members yeah i was just doing that if it's not nine, yeah. nine nine thousand would become eleven six ten okay. nine and a half ninety five hundred would become twelve two five five mm -hmm. ten thousand would become twelve nine hundred five thousand uh would become six four hundred and fifty and then five hundred and fifty uh five, i'm sorry five thousand five hundred would become seven thousand ninety five that's applying a, tw a straight up 29 yeah. percent all of them straight down the line yeah yep and so that's a jump of let's see 11 it's a jump up about two thousand it's roughly it's just under a third is the two, way yeah 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 which, I mean, again, these aren't huge numbers for somebody that works, you know, with their elect, with their ward. You know, I mean, I, I know how Jim works because I've known him since 18. Yep. And then I moved and I know, you know, how Stan and Karen work because I had that split. I was just Karen, then I became Stan. You know, they changed the board one and two, but, but they, they put a lot of time into it. And, you know, how far does 12,000 go these days? You know, it's just really money is taken on a completely different, not that the city has maybe made a lot more money other than with the, the marijuana sales. I'm hoping, you know, the budget and it seems like that has been kind of robust. Okay. But I don't think those salaries, even with that 29% increase, I don't think any of those salaries shock me or seem out of line at all. Mm -hmm. Any other comments? Does someone want to put forward a motion? Um, we've talked a variety of different salaries here. Um, does anyone want to make I'm, a motion? I'm going to make one. I'll make one more pitch. Uh, and, and I'm a pragmatist. And I think that the mayor should make 150000 I think teachers should make 100000 I don't disagree with any uh, anything that has been said. But I don't want to seem out of touch with reality just because we've been given permission to do whatever the hell we want. Um, so I would uh, I would push back uh, on um, and, and I know it's not it's not a matter of what is fair because you guys have all described quite well what is fair and and Deb for a lot of these people making twelve they're really making thirty with the health insurance mm -hmm. so it's it is serious compensation for a very a part time job even though it's a hard job and they and, and I'd like to say we can pay them whatever you know a lot more because they're deserving and they're and we're blessed to have them. I just don't think this is, uh, you know, I always say, don't put 20 miles on a, as a speed limit on a back road because it's so crazy. Everybody will go 40, whereas if you put 30, they'll probably go 30. You know, you have to be somewhat practical when you make recommendations. So I, I, I just I'll go with the committee because I'm a team player. But, um, you know, I just I just thought I would say that because I think what you're presenting is not it might be just it might be disregarded. Um, any comments on that? I mean, we don't, you know, like I said, we we could decide one compensation percentage for the mayor and it can be different for the council and for school. It doesn't have to be the same um, because, you know, there there is a very robust benefits package in place um, for the council and, and for the school. As I recall, didn't I see that only nine people of elected officials are taking part in the health insurance? Six. Six city councilors, so the majority of the city councilors and three school committee members. Yeah. So total. I, right? I think I'm right in that, John. I think you. I think it makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, Peter, I don't close. remember, but you're, it sounds close. Mm -hmm. Close enough. So it's it's a benefit that's there if people need it, but that does say apparent, you know, that if 
six of the nine, I mean, that's the majority are using it. So that's that additional financial benefit that we've been looking at. Um, so I don't know. I guess I just want to, my feeling is we recommend what we think is, is reasonable and fair and let the council worry about it. They can always adjust it downward. I, I, I do just to clarify though, can we just I want I want to make sure we're clear on the benefits piece um, because we've been taught my assumption through the conversation has been that we want to retain the benefits. Is that a fair assumption or do we need to vote on that? Is I think that's a fair assumption. Mm -hmm. I think so. So there's no just okay. So we're just yeah. just as we go forward with the conversation and yeah. Okay, we're okay. We're assuming the benefits are going to stay in place. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. All right. So why don't we why don't we look at this one at um, one at a time? I Meaning, let's look at the mayor and then let's look at the other positions. I need a, a motion on the mayor. Okay, I can make a motion that, and and I don't know if you want to. I mean, just do a number or how we get to that number. You can put, you I, can give, you can give a, per, a, a hard okay. number or a percentage. I would suggest that we pick 119,325 as the annual compensation for the mayor's salary based on the 27% inflation plus the 2% going forward for future cost of living. Okay. Anybody want to second that? I'll second it. For more discussion. You're seconding it. Okay. Um, Felicia, roll call. Don. I'll say yes. Tara. Yes. Felicia, yes. Deb. Yes. And Peter. Yes. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right, now let's look at the other. I, I do, is it is it safe to assume that, it, can we apply one percentage of specific, whatever we decide that is, to, um, to the other positions for the council and the school members? Is there any reason why we would wanna look at a different algorithm for what we apply to that? I mean, it can be different from the mayors, but I'm talking yeah. about for all of those positions, they should all Within have those positions. Okay. Well, I think the city council, I mean, I don't really know. I know the school committee members have worked very hard because of COVID, but I don't know if that's a regular thing that they work at that hard. I, I mean, I'm not saying they don't work hard, but I mean, compared to the city council. I've heard the school committee works. They have very long meetings that can often go to one o'clock in the morning. Yeah. So, so that's. Um, but I didn't know if that's regular or if that's just the last few years. I know it's been that way the last few years i don't know i don't know, I don't know. okay so let's I, go ahead peter i would I, I would suggest that we apply the 27 if, if that's the way we want to go it, it's fair to do the 27 percent to every single category okay so just to be clear we apply to 29 percent to them because we oh, have uh, so i just want to yeah, make sure yeah. that i mean the, the, the 27 percent is uh you know hard hard data and the two percent is a little more arbitrary but sure yes um, is it, so? Do you want do you want to make a motion on that, or 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 do other people want to have discussion? I actually don't want. I don't want to make the motion because <laughs> I'm struggling with this whole thing. But I'll cope with it. How's that? Sound? Um, can I can I ask one thing? Sure. Do you think we should look at it in two separate bins? The remainder of these positions, meaning city council, as one conversation and the school committee and the trustees in another? We can certainly why? do that. I, I don't, yeah, it, it would be good to know why you're thinking that. I'm just thinking that the city council tends to have more of a public onus put on them, um, more citywide conversation, more people wanting their time, attention, and 
um, expertise. And I'm just wondering if we shouldn't pause for a minute and think about if there's any differentiators between the city council group and the others. Well, um, you're, 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 you're looking at the numbers, right, Tara? So you're seeing yeah. the wards, the count, they're starting yeah. at nine and the school committee's at five. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think five, I think the school committee, have heard, they've been taking a lot of flack. I mean, there's a lot of, lot of junk that goes with anything having to do with schooling these days, but. Yeah. So just so I understand, um, does, do, are you saying that, are you su suggesting or starting a conversation saying that that school committee members should be making a larger percentage to be more in alignment perhaps with the council? I, I, I wanna sort of get an idea of the direction you're going in. No, I mean, I guess I guess I just wanted to have a conversation with the group about, you know, whether or not the 29% or whatever the number is, um, would sort of hold across all these other categories, you know, and I could kind of group the city councilors into one group, whatever we decided, and then the other committee members into another group. Um, you know, and I just didn't know if, if we wanted to have a conversation about that because, you know, if, if the school committee members maybe don't, not that they don't do as much, but they're not as like sought after or the position is not as um, time intensive for the whole year because um, school is not the whole year and the city council positions are the whole year. Um, I don't know. Or if you're thinking, you know, the committee's thinking, no, actually the school committee members need to come up to the city council level. So should they be increased more? just to bring them on par with everyone else? I mean, I guess I guess I'm just asking the question of what what you all think about that. It's I, giving I, me pause. Yeah, I, I have I'll be honest, I haven't heard anything to that effect. Yeah. Um, I have heard from people that uh yes, all the all the positions should move up, but I haven't heard anything um that would say that the school committee members should be on par with the counselor. I don't know the reason for that. It could very well be something that you stated before. It could be that the school committee is very intense, but for shorter periods of time. So it doesn't, it's not as, as intense over the full year, the way the council is. Um, I don't have an answer for it, but nobody has addressed that particular thing with me. You, you would hope that would be the case because they're making, uh, the city council is making 80% uh, more. Right. Quite, quite a big differential already in the bank. It's almost, it's almost double. Is there anything, Terry? So you're just asking us as a group. Um, is there anything you've heard or anything you've seen? No, I mean, I guess I was just wondering, you know, why the big differentiator? Should the percentages be the same for both groups that we're suggesting to go up because it's cost of living or? you know, because the school committee members aren't working year round, perhaps, is it not as big of an increase as the city councilors and the mayor? I think for me, it's a really good question. Um, but the only thing that negates it is it's, it just hasn't come up. I think that with everyone we've talked to, um, if, if anyone had said, oh, you know, boy, that those school committee members, they really need to be brought up a lot more to be in allowed al alignment with council. I just haven't, that hasn't come up in any conversation for me, uh, which is why I'm asking if maybe it's come up with other people if they've heard that. I think my assumption, because I haven't heard anything otherwise, is that the, the, the relationship of those, that compensation to one another seems to be fine. It's just the fact that all of them need to come up to... Mm -hmm. Or what to whatever percentage we decide or whatever percent percentage we recommend. Got it. And, and I have a question about the at large counselor making, I mean, it's just it's not much more, but the out at large counselors making more than the ward counselors. That doesn't, I mean, that seemed odd to me when I saw that. Because I don't know, I mean, I I know, having lived here, I always went to my ward counselor. I didn't 
if I had an issue, I didn't go to the at-large counselor. I I just assumed that the ward counselors are the ones that are kind of working more on the ground, you know, and that the at-large are kind of not necessarily backups, but but just not as likely to be hounded, like Jim was saying, you know, nicely, you know, help me figure this out, help me figure that out, that it's generally the ward counselors that have the larger responsibility, and yet they're making less than the at-large. So to me, that it seems to be that they should make the same. I, I know why the city council president makes more, and maybe even that should be a little higher bump, but I don't see why the at-large makes more than the regular ward city councilor. Yeah, I did. I don't, and I apologize. I don't remember where I heard this, but what I did hear is that the at-large um, positions do require more work internally. I, I think you're right. They may not be called upon by constituents as much because nobody feels a sense of ownership to any particular one, but because they're at-large, they need to spread themselves over more ward meetings or things that come up. Hmm. Any other discussion? I we're past six thirty, so I, I know they want to. Be I've got. I have to. I have to scoot in a minute. Okay. Um, does anyone any, any other discussion on this? Because we just we we've made some major decisions, but we do just have um, really just a couple more things to go through. Yes, Deb. I, I would just make a motion that we apply the same twenty nine percent to the elected official, the part time elected officials. Okay. And raise all of them accordingly. Okay. 29%, like you read before, the, the amounts. Uh, do I have a second? Uh, we don't, no second on that motion? Oh, I'll, I'll second it. Okay. <laughs> Such a I thought, Tara, I thought Tara had her hand up for a second. Yeah, I did too. Oh, Tara, I'm sorry. Did you have your hand up? I missed that. Uh, I, mean, I thought no. you were just... Oh, okay. I thought you were pulling that, pushing the hair back under your, behind your ear. Okay. Um, John? Uh, yes. Uh, Tara? Yes. Felicia? Uh, Deb? Yes. And Peter? Yes. Peter's a reluctant yes. I can see I'm it. a reluctant. I was going to say that. <laughs> Okay. Well, Peter, the worst they can do is say no. Yeah. I, I, I know. <clears throat> I, I, I understand. Okay. <laughs> um, those, those are the major decisions that we need okay. to be made right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply these decisions to the draft. And uh, tomorrow I can send the draft over to our subcommittee for review. Okay. okay. Um, John, just for clarification, um, is the increase going to be 29.08 for to account for the 27.08 in salary with the 2% or are you just going to say an even 29? Just so I, said, I said I said in straight up 29. I mean, it's okay. so close. Yeah, the 0 0.08, I don't think it's going to make. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Great. Um, any other business? Okay, so we have we just so, so the subcommittee, I believe, is meeting in two days. So I'll make sure that this gets out so the subcommittee can start meeting on it. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll do the draft, I'll share it with Peter. Peter and I will send this out to the subcommittee. Um, and then it goes to the city next week um, if for them to, to do what they will. Yeah. And we have, oh, I'm sorry, we have one more meeting. I apologize. I think we have one more meeting next Monday. Is that That's it? That's what I have in my book. Yeah. He's, that's right. Okay, so it goes to the subcommittee this week, and then we have the final draft. We have our meeting next Monday, and with any luck, if everybody approves, it could be a very short meeting, and yeah. then we submit it to the city, and then we, we all celebrate. Just, yeah, just to check before we leave, I have the, our subcommittee's meeting April 27 at 9 a.m. Is that? Uh, yes, I believe that's right. I might be yeah, off. Have, okay. Yeah. yeah. It's Friday, Deb. It's, yeah, yeah, so that's, so it's, yeah. Or no, it, Thursday, Thursday. Thursday, and I, Sam has- Thursday, it's Thursday, use, yeah. Yep, Sam's gonna use this um, same Zoom account to set up that meeting. Yep. And the I know that's already gone out. The I'm, subcommittee I'm, of who? 
subcommittee is Tara, Deb, and Sam. Thank you. And we've already posted um, the agenda to the city's website. Yeah, it's gone out. So it's we're, we're cool on that. Right. Because we know when meetings go out, they'll definitely occur. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right. We've got a quite, a, quite a track record. <laughs> well, we're not but the we only try. Guy. We try hard. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, is there a motion to adjourn? So I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Second. All right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, all right. All right. John? Yes. Tara? Yes. Felicia? Yes. Deb? Yes. And Peter? Yes.